Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, June 3rd. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, just to record the madness of this era, later today I'm going to go to a high school graduation. No, not mine, but I'll be at the high school graduation with the graduate. And, of course, the family won't be able to get out of the car. Right? We're going to have to stay in the car while the graduate hops out and gets her diploma. Welcome to June 2020 in America. Let me also say, too, my county, Santa Clara County, apparently decided to open up. So I thought, oh, this is great. Finally, I get to go to my favorite watering hole. There wouldn't be sports on TV. Right? Because the NBA, Major League Baseball, they're all off TV right now. But I thought, you know what? Just to see people, just to hope to see people who used to work at the restaurant would be worthwhile. But of course, in the rules, and obviously the people passing these rules don't go to restaurants, they pointed out that only the outdoor areas of restaurants would be open. Come on now. <laughs> In other words, if your bar doesn't have a patio area, you're out of luck. <laughs> In other words, that restaurant where people are dying to get paid, people are dying to go back to work, the only people they can really prepare food for are the people who can fit in the patio area of the restaurant. Ludicrous. Well, let's get back to sports. Because the pandemic and the lockdown matter. Right? So, we know we're in an era where Andy Dalton, the backup quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, is making about $3 million a year. Right? That's the deal he signed with the Cowboys. We know that starter Dak Prescott wants more than 10 times that amount, right? Wants about Russell Wilson money, $35, $36 million a year, right? After all, the backup's making $3 million. Even by NFL standards, $3 million, the backup's making less than backup Chase Daniel made some years. With the NFL, you know it's big money, and the money's not even as big, by the way, as it is in the NBA. But yet, in women's boxing, arguably the two biggest names of, oh, probably the last 25 years are talking about fighting each other. By the way, they're both unbeaten. One is unbeaten Layla Ali. The other is two-time Olympic gold medalist and current champion Clarissa Shields. They're talking about fighting. And, of course, Layla Ali asked for $5 million. And that's being met with disbelief. People are saying, you got to be kidding me. That's a lot of money. Folks, let me offer a different opinion. No, it's not. A fight of this magnitude in a professional sport, a fight that carries this legacy. If Leila Ali at 43 were to beat Clarissa Shields, and I'd be taking Shields in that fight. I think the jab wins that fight for Shields. But if Layla Ali were to beat Clarissa Shields, my God, that would be quite the comeback, wouldn't it? Out the ring for years, back in against a two-time Olympic gold medalist who's unbeaten as a pro, who beat Christina Hammer. 
right? If Clarissa Shields were to win, wow. You know, superstar already with her crowning achievement, a win over a historical figure in the sport. So Layla Ali asked for $5 million, and you know the rest. The money's not there. It's women's boxing. The money has never been there in any way where we can compare it to the big events in men's boxing. There's a lot of gender bias, isn't there? And of course, in this COVID-19 world, where I'm not even allowed to get out of the car, I have to make sure my camera can actually zoom in so I can take a picture from the passenger seat. Right, promoters are looking around and they're saying, gee, well, how much money can we pay a boxer? If there's going to be social distancing, <laughs> if I have to have empty seats in the arena, worse yet, let's say there's no social distancing. What happens if fans want to see the fight and then they're thinking to themselves, you know, I really can't afford to get COVID-19 right now. Do I want to be out in a crowd? Let's say the fight's in Vegas. And someone loves Vegas, right? Some OG out there loves Vegas and says, oh, I can't wait for this fight. Then they're hearing, oh, there'll be no buffets, right? Then they're hearing, oh, when you go into this bar, there's going to be social distancing. What's the point, right? So understand the sport of boxing has changed. Let me just say that. I hope boxing has the common sense. I hope promoters have the common sense to realize that this fight needs to happen and that the way to make it happen, let me make a plea here to the elites in boxing. This includes the fighters. The way to make this fight happen is to put it on the card of another big fight. Right? Have Tyson Fury, current heavyweight champion, the lineal, the WBC. Fight Deontay Wilder, the former five-year, multi-year heavyweight champion. And both of those fighters should realize that they can bring a lot more eyeballs to the party if they're getting paid on a pay-per-view basis. They should realize that they can bring a lot more eyeballs to the party as well as a lot more fans by having this fight on the undercard. Right, folks, that would be a whopper of a pay-per-view. Understand, too, when you're selling a fight, you want to have people who can talk smack, who carry legitimacy, as part of the promotion. Could you imagine a promotional event where Layla Ali and Clarissa Shields are talking about why each is going to win? Where Clarissa Shields is talking about Christy Martin and other people who were contemporaries with her? And Clarissa Shields is talking about her contemporaries? Everyone wins. You know, President John F. Kennedy used to say, a rising tide lifts all boats. The money will be there if this is handled the right way. Right? Layla Ali, quite frankly, deserves $5 million. Clarissa Shields, quite frankly, deserves $5 million. Clarissa Shields is willing to have it be a 50-50 fight. If you add this, have this be, the undercard fight to Fury Wilder. I believe you would bring in at least $10 million more business. Right? Have fans of women's boxing. Have women. These are the kind of fights that will attract a lot of fans. A lot of people will be galvanized for this. Maybe the Ali Shields fight attracts a different group of fans than Fury Wilder would. 
right? Have them on the same ticket. Make the night historic. Make the promotion historic. Let me say, too, that if fighters understand economics, and hardly anyone understands economics, right? That's why um, the crypto community right now is getting things for pennies on the dollar, right? Um, if folks understand economics, a fighter like Tyson Fury will realize that he wouldn't be able to pay for the great press, the great PR he would get by being on the same card as unbeaten Layla Ali and unbeaten Clarissa Shields. Let me say too, if you look at Tyson Fury, he's really an Ali figure. He truly is. Right? Same type thing. A uh, big clunky era. And here's a guy who can move. Here's a guy with a jab. Here's a guy with different fight styles. I think it would be interesting having him on the same card with Layla Ali. But you and I know that probably is not going to happen. Because boxing lacks an imagination to the point where Adrian Broner is talking about quitting so he can go into a hip-hop rap career. Right? Boxing is so into squeezing the last dollar that they overlook the big picture, the fans that would be brought in, the eyeballs, the TV viewers that would be brought in by really a monumental fight in women's boxing being part of a big-time heavyweight fight between a reigning champ and a former multi-year champion. Let me shift gears. You know, Tyson Fury was at a UFC event. The article is on BoxingScene.com. It's a good one. And he told an interviewer, Coogan, who's an excellent interviewer, that he looked around, this event was done without fans, and he openly wondered whether he could fight without fans. For the gamblers out there, you know, we all have a list of fighters who we feel have mood swings, right? Fighters who, for whatever reason, have uneven performances. When the fighter's inspired, he's great. He's bulletproof. When the fighter's uninspired, as Ray Leonard once said, and I believe Ray Leonard's one of these guys who had mood swings. When the fighter's uninspired, when he's entering the ring, he could sense that it's not his night. For some reason, he's just not energized. Now, if you know a fighter really relies on the crowd for support, Right? The fighter feeds off the crowd. When the fighter's in trouble, the fighter feeds off the crowd's cheers. The fighter feels he's part of a bigger cause than himself. Right? If you're supporting that kind of fighter, and understand, fighters are no different than the rest of us. Look at all the people in the world taking antidepressants. Look at the fighters who themselves have told you that they've suffered from depression. Tyson Fury among them. You need to understand that there is a risk involved. And I believe it's meaningful to have that fighter fight without a crowd. Now, in Tyson Fury's case, it's academic, right? Tyson Fury is such a big name. He's such a big name that he doesn't have to fight in an empty arena. He can wait until COVID passes. There's so much money involved. Even his opponent, Deontay Wilder, will understand that fighting in front of a packed arena is going to, 
you know, flood everyone's pockets, right? But if you're betting on, and we'll call the fighter a Tyson Fury type, someone who's been suicidal in the past, someone who's had depression issues, someone who gains a lot of weight, isn't a math type, isn't the kind of guy who is connecting dots in the ring, Floyd Mayweather. I believe Floyd Mayweather at the end of the day approached boxing as a science, right? He's in the ring. Mayweather was prepared to get booed, right? But Mayweather, a technician, a highly technical fighter like that, who's in there doing certain things, reading certain keys, doesn't need motivation from the crowd. A math type's going to do better than someone who might be technical, right? I, I consider Tyson Fury to be highly technical, but I also consider Tyson Fury to worry about the crowd. He's a guy who needs a certain ring entrance, wants to have a certain image with the crowd, wants to come across a certain way. Here's the crowd cheer and it lifts him. Ray Leonard, I felt was that kind of fighter, right? That's another difference between Ray and Floyd. Floyd didn't need the crowd. I believe Ray Leonard needed the crowd, particularly in fights like the Marvin Hagler fight. Parts of Ray's game were geared for the crowd, flashing hands, letting the crowd know, hey, I'm here. Right? Roy Jones strikes me as a guy who needed the crowd. Freak athlete. But Jones would play to the crowd on occasion. Right? Those guys are going to be hurt. Mood swing guys will be hurt by this new era. Where I believe even after COVID passes, because there's not a lot of money in boxing, I believe you're going to have a lot of fights in front of no fans. Right? Understand, when you have a lot of fans and you actually have extra costs, right? You have to rent the fan-friendly arena. It can't be done in a TV studio. Right? You're paying a site fee. You're dealing with security logistics, insurance issues. For a sport that has a very hard time, most of the time, getting more than 5,000 fans to an arena. Let me say this. Look at Floyd Mayweather's career. You know, years ago, even Floyd's then manager said that Floyd would have a hard time attracting flies to a dumpster. Right? Even the fighters who we view now as box office kings, guys who lifted the sports to new heights in terms of their box office appeal, at times in their careers couldn't get but a couple thousand people to their fights. Right, Johnny Nelson, excellent fighter, multi-year champion talks about while he was champion, fighting in front of pretty much empty arenas, just a smattering of fans. Because that's the sport, because the sport in its current form can't pay Leila Ali $5 million to come out of retirement against this era's best and to risk her unbeaten legacy. Because we're dealing with that sport, you're going to have a lot of fights in front of really studio audiences, if they have a crowd, going forward, right? The money is going to come, welcome to this current age, from, let's say, Amazon or the streaming service, right? With embedded ads from the trade desk, if you know what I'm talking about, and stuff like that. Right? It's not going to come from fans paying money. So, I love boxing. I don't mean a diss to sport. 
I just want to let everyone understand. There's so little money in boxing that Adrian Broner is about to embark on a rap career. Right? You're seeing an illusion where you're seeing the few million dollar fights out there. If you look at a couple of Anthony Joshua fights, you're thinking, my God, what a great career. <laughs> He's making tens of billions of dollars. He's fighting in front of tens of thousands of fans. And then you realize, you know what? That's what? 1% of the fight game? Vladimir Klitschko fought Brian Jennings in New York City. Right, I believe that fight was at Madison Square Garden. It was not a sellout. Think about it. Don't get fooled by Canelo going places and having sellouts. Canelo, Rocky Fielding, standing room only. Right, Canelo is 1%. Right, he's the tip of the top. Right, Floyd at the end, tip of the top. Floyd early in his career, according to his manager, could not draw flies to a dumpster, right? So forgive me. I'd love to see Leila Ali, Clarissa Shields. I'd be betting big on Shields because here's one of the secrets in the sport. Male or female, Clarissa Shields has one of the sport's best jabs, right? As Larry Holmes could tell you, if you have an elite jab, that by itself can win you fights, right? Let me say too, the perfect punch to have against a KO puncher, that's who Leila Ali was. Most people did not go the distance against Leila Ali, understand? <laughs> the interesting part of this fight is while Clarissa Shields talks a lot of smack, Clarissa Shields is actually a finesse fighter, doesn't get a lot of KOs. Right, Leila Ali, by contrast, is really a KO puncher. So understand Clarissa Shields' jab and her boxing ability would be able to win the slow rounds, would be able to keep Leila Ali outside. Leila Ali, as Teddy Atlas likes to say, would have to pay a price for the real estate around Clarissa Shields. That's a riveting fight that belongs on the biggest stage possible. Right, Tyson Fury, the next time you fight Deontay Wilder, what I want you to do is to talk to your people. Turn to them and say, look, I want this fight on the undercard. I'm prepared to walk away, make a business decision. I'm prepared to walk away from a couple million dollars here simply because you're going to get that back and more from the added eyeballs that the undercard brings to the fight. From the fact that people will remember the card more, right? Whatever Wilder and Fury do, if a great fight between Leila Ali, a historical fight between Leila Ali and Clarissa Shields takes place right before their fight, that's just going to frame that evening in the memories of the fans who see it, right? So let's hope the powers that be, promoters, managers, Fighters recognize this is a huge money-making opportunity for boxing as a whole, right? You've seen the women's division take off in UFC, right? It's taken off. This is an opportunity for boxing to get a similar liftoff off a fight that, quite frankly, would feature two unbeatens. Two different generations in something riveting. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me add this too to the no crowd thing. There's certain fighters, and they're great fighters, right? Pacquiao, Canelo, who enter the ring. I'll include Joshua in this, right? who enter the ring with what I believe is a two-round advantage, right? The crowd is hyped. You know when Manny Pacquiao enters the ring, it's a big moment in the sport. 
Pacquiao enters the ring. He always goes to a corner. He drops to a knee. The crowd is going crazy. All of this is before they touch gloves. Right? You look at Manny Pacquiao and you think, just like you did with Elvis Presley, you think, you know what? Pacquiao is in the building. Right? You look at a Canelo fight before he enters the ring, before he walks into the ring. You're looking at the crowd and you're saying, my God, I, I can't remember the last time I saw a sellout at Madison Square Garden <laughs> for a guy who doesn't even fight at Madison Square Garden. Then Canelo comes out and you understand you're seeing charisma. You're seeing the present. You're seeing a guy who the minute he signs his name to a contract, you know that fight is going to be a multi-million dollar event. Right? Several of Canelo's opponents, several, made their biggest purses against him. You think Golovkin made that kind of money before he popped in the ring with Canelo? You think Danny Jacobs was pulling down that kind of money before he hopped in the ring with Canelo? Well, these are the guys, because they're popular, because everyone knows these are the guys bringing the eyeballs to the sport. Right? Everyone knows that these are the men responsible for the tens of thousands of people in the stands. You know, I can sit here and tell you I feel Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world. Right? He's number one on my list. The bottom line, though, is I, even I recognize Anthony Joshua is the box office king in the division. Just look at the TV numbers back in the UK for his fight, the rematch against Andy Ruiz. So these cash cow fighters, the guys who, if they throw a punch that comes within six inches of your face, the crowd's ooing and eyeing, right? These guys aren't going to have that level of an advantage when there are no fans. Just imagine Manny Pacquiao comes in the ring. There are no fans there to cheer him. He goes over to the corner. He goes on one knee to thank God. There's no one there to notice that. Canelo shows up in Madison Square Garden. There's no one in the building. Understand, if there's no one in the building, that strips away a lot of the ring entrance. That strips away members of the entourage who are there to be seen on camera. Right? If you're betting on one of these fighters who enters the ring with a two-round-to-none lead, while I'll agree, judges know the politics of the sport. They know who's paying their bill, right? They, they understand the reason why this is a mega event is because of Canelo. Right? But you need to realize that if it's a very contested, competitive fight, The fan favorite isn't going to get the fan support during the fight in a way that would impact the judges' cards. Right? So, just write your own list of things to consider when betting on fanless fights. Right? For me, the first thing is, gee, how dependent is the guy on the fans for energy and encouragement? Is this guy a guy who, entering the ring, has mood swings and might feel on his way into the ring that I just don't have it tonight? I'm going to lose. Right? Those fighters might have a hard time against the highly technical accountant type fighter. The Floyd Mayweathers of the world, right? Who has a certain standard that he's going to hit. He's, he's not playing to the crowd. The fighters who play to themselves are going to have an advantage. Then, of course, the second thing I'm looking for is, okay, well, here is Pacquiao, here is Canelo, here is AJ, and they're entering the ring. Gee, there's going to be no crowd here. 
There's going to be no chant of, you know, Manny, Manny, AJ, AJ. There's no chant. Right? The judges are going to have more of an opportunity to notice that Alexander Povetkin is actually outmaneuvering AJ. The sounds of the punches are not going to be interfered with by the cheers of the fans. So those quick strike attacks, the ambushes, where a Povetkin comes in and lands some shots then get back out. There's going to be no fan interference. There's going to be no low cheer for a good punch landed by the opponent. A lot of cheers when the favored fighter comes within six inches of his opponent. That could impact things. Big time. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.